right, so hello and welcome back to What the Dickens. Today I'm going to be talking about the old curiosity shop. Chapter 1. Although I am an old man, night is generally my time for walking. In the summer I often leave home early in the morning and roam about the fields and lanes all day or even escape for days or weeks together. But saving in the country I seldom go out until after dark, though heaven be thanked I love its lights and feel the cheerfulness it sheds upon the earth as much as any creature living. Now I had a really really hard time deciding where in this list, where in this ranking of Dickens the old curiosity shop should go because I am very very fond of it but I think it is the most problematic of my favourites of Dickens books. For a long time it was my second favourite Dickens book and it has kind of descended as I have thought a bit more about Dickens. It's one I know very well and have read quite a few times. It's one of the first ones I reread, I think, because I knew I loved it so much the first time and I am very, very fond of it, but it is problematic and it is difficult and I don't think it is one of his best novels. It is also the only book from the first half of Dickens's career that is here in the second half of my favourites. The central premise of The Old Curiosity Shop is this. There is a young girl called Nell. She is somewhere between 12 and 14 I would say and little Nell lives in this place called The Old Curiosity Shop with her grandfather who has brought her up and her grandfather owns this shop and they sell all kinds of old random things but they are not doing very well and it becomes apparent quite early on in the book that her grandfather is very in debt. Little Nell and her grandfather run away and they go on kind of an adventure and a walk all around the English countryside to kind of try and find some kind of life for themselves away from London and to escape her grandfather's creditors. Meanwhile in London various things are going on in connection with them. The main villain of the old curiosity shop is a man called Mr Quilp who is one of Nell and her grandfather's creditors and Mr Quilp is very keen to try and track down Nell and her grandfather. Back in London we also have have a young boy called Kit who is a friend of little Nell. He starts to work as a servant for a kind of upper class family and his story is sort of really lovely and touching. He is a really nice character. Meanwhile we have this family of lawyers, the Brasses, who work for Mr Quilp and something suspicious is going on there. And there's a young man, unfortunately named Dick Swiveller, who is one of my favourite Dickens characters of all time and is one of the reasons why the old curiosity shop is in the second week of What the Dickens. Dick Swiveller is friends with little Nell's elder brother Fred and Fred conceives of this scheme whereby he can marry little Nell to Dick Swiveller because Fred believes that his grandfather has a lot of money. This isn't really the case but this is what Fred believes. Therefore Dick Swiveller is quite interested in kind of trying to track down little Nell because Dick Swiveller is not doing very well in life and he could do with a bit of money. He ends up working as a clerk for the Brass family who are the lawyers of Mr Quilp and while there he kind of discovers a lot more about the Brass family and their secrets and also meets a kitchen maid called the Marchioness who is another of my favourite Dickensian characters. So things that I love about the old curiosity shop. Mainly Dick Swiveller and Kit. I'm gonna be honest, in the old curiosity shop the central plotline of Little Nell and her grandfather does not interest me that much. I do love it, I think it's really poignant and sweet and the complex relationship that Nell has with her grandfather is really interestingly dealt with because she loves him so much but she also knows that he's not always a good man and he doesn't always do what is best for them, try as she might to guide him in the right direction. She can't always do it but she loves him and that is dealt with really really well. Their relationship is very tenderly and softly and subtly created by Dickens in a really brilliant way but for me that plotline of Little Little Nell and her grandfather feels quite like Nicholas Nickleby in a kind of comedic but also sad kind of adventure romp around England and that is not what I think Dickens does best. I do think he does it well but I think there are other more complicated things that he can do better. And what I really love about the old curiosity shop are the plot lines going on back in London, primarily that of Kit and the house he works for and his kind of growing relationship with a servant girl there which is really de nicely dealt with and really sweetly done. I think the old curiosity shop contains some of the best romantic relationships in early Dickens in my opinion, some of the ones that are the most developed. And I love Dick Swiveller as a character. He is hilarious, his moral transformation is brilliant and the kind of journey he goes through across the book and how his character and personality changes is just beautiful. And I love his relationship with the Marchioness, this servant girl who he meets and soon discovers that the Brasses are treating appallingly and it makes him kind of reevaluate his life and everything he has and everything he thought about before in this brilliant way. And their relationship is brilliantly done, really fascinating and really well, well developed. The Oracle Curiosity Shop is at times a very sad book but it's also a very kind of tender and loving book and it is both very funny and very touching in that way that Dickens does so well. So 
things I like less about The Old Curiosity Shop. As I said, I don't find Little Nell and her grandfather and their plotline as engaging as the plotlines going on back in London. I would also say that The Old Curiosity Shop I don't think is Dickens' most polished novel. For example, the first few chapters of The Old Curiosity Shop are told in the first person from a kind of passerby who meets Little Nell one day and therefore meets her grandfather, but after that, that character completely disappears and we move into the third person. It kind of feels a little unplanned, like Dickens was, you know, writing for his serial magazine thinking, oh, I'm going to start this novel, and then thinking, hang on a second, I don't want it to be in first person, let's change that. It doesn't feel as polished as some of his other novels. Also, for me, the character of Mr Quilp is very, 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 very problematic. And it's a reason why I'm always hesitant to say that I really love The Old Curiosity Shop. There is a lot about it that I love, but the character of Mr Quilp cannot be ignored. It is very problematic. Mr Quilp is the central villain of The Old Curiosity Shop. He is a horrible, horrible, creepy man. He is perving on Little Nell when she's like 13 for quite a lot of the book in a really creepy way. He is so utterly horrible to his wife, like just, just horrible, just disgusting, just it's awful and painful to read. And he is a completely really nasty, awful, monstrous man. And he also suffers from dwarfism, and for Dickens, Quilp's disability and Quilp's evilness are bound up together because Dickens tries to depict him as a monster, both in terms of the way he acts and in terms of the way he looks, and it's very unpleasant and it's not very nice and it's very, very problematic. I've spoken a bit before about Victorian presentation of disability and how characters with disabilities in Victorian literature tend to be presented either as victims or villains, and Dickens is very guilty of this, especially in his earlier books. I'm going to talk a bit later about the presentation of disability in Our Mutual Friend once I get there, but in The Old Curiosity Shop the presentation of Mr Quilp is really problematic, and it's a reason that makes me always kind of hesitant about my feelings towards The Old Curiosity Shop, because you cannot ignore the difficulties of the presentation of Mr Quilp. He is a horrible man, but he's not just a horrible man that happens to be disabled. For Dickens it is something more complicated going on and something not very nice. The idea in Victorian literature that if you have some kind of physical disability or disfigurement it is because there is something, you know, wrong with your soul or your morality, which is obviously a horrible, horrible idea and is a big problem in a lot of Victorian literature. And that is one of the reasons why I feel a bit hesitant about The Old Curiosity Shop. I do love it, I think it has some brilliant characters and some brilliant books, but it is also a very problematic book in terms of the presentation of Mr Quilp. So I think that is basically all I wanted to say about The Old Curiosity Shop. I have a lot of fondness for some of its characters and for some of its plots, and I think certain things in it are developed really interestingly and done really well, and as I said, I think Dick Swiveller and the Marchioness are my favourite like pair in Dickens, one of my favourite Dickensian couples, but the character of Mr Quilp is intensely problematic, and so I think it's best to read The Old Curiosity Shop kind of aware of that and kind of being careful of that aspect of the book because it's not very nice. Anyway, I think that is all I want to say about The Old Curiosity Shop and I'll be back tomorrow talking about another Dickens book.